Hi there folks. Right now we're going to be tying a fat Albert. This is a grasshopper, salmon fly, terrestrial uh, tractor pattern that we use quite a bit and it always works well for us. A great summer pattern. Um, so we'll get my thread secured on the hook here first of all. And then next what you'll want to do is cut two pieces of foam that are identical. Uh, mine are yellow and brown. You can tie this in any color you want. I like to usually tie a, a lighter color under a darker color. And you're going to want to tie these so they're almost two times the length of the hook shank as you can see here. I'm about two times the, the length of the hook shank. What we're going to start out by doing is tying these pieces on top of each other. So one piece is going to be for the underbody and the other parts the overbody. So I want yellow to be my underbody, so I'm going to tie that one in on top of the brown. And I tie these in fairly close to the front of the hook. I'll leave just enough room to, to put on my finishing wraps and to, to tie the head when I tie these in. And I just tie them straight in there like this. And as you do this, you're going to want to make sure you keep the foam on top of the hook. So I'm going to wrap this back just to get it all secured on there. And you'll want to wrap back to where the hook starts to bend down about. So past the barb, maybe even a couple wraps just a little further back. Okay, so I'm right at the back of the hook. It's where you want to be. And the next step is I want to cover this foam basically entirely with thread. The front part doesn't matter quite as much because we'll be getting to that a little later. And I'm going to try to cover most of this so it's a uniform body. And we'll just keep wrapping this back and covering that foam up. Uh, you can also dub this part of the body. I still would recommend wrapping it first so that you get a uniform shape to it. I usually don't dub mine, sometimes I do. Sometimes it makes a difference with the fish, sometimes it doesn't. It's just a matter of what you want to do. So I've got it done pretty well there. It doesn't have to be exact, but just so you get most of that foam covered up and get a uniform color going through there. Um, the next step is we're going to fold just the yellow foam over and we're going to make our segmented body with this. So as I go, I'm going to take a, about two strong wraps here. And I'm going to segment this as I go forward. Move the thread under the foam, fold the foam back over and create another segment. You usually want to shoot for about four or five segments in this part of the body and we're going to do this for about two-thirds of the fly. So we'll just keep going, create another segment, wrap it down a little, wrap it down tight. You can use your fingers to manipulate this a little bit as you go, it won't stay exactly on top, but manipulate it. A couple more wraps, put in another segment. And that's about where I want to be. Now if you look at this from underneath, you can see that I have those nice little segments there. Um, you can see here I've got these segments along the body that gives it a nice buggy look to it. Then we're going to come and pull our brown foam over as the overbody. And we're going to tighten that down with four or five good solid wraps. And now you can see I've got that that body all tightened up for the back part. Now we're going to add some legs. So these back legs I like to do, I call it grasshopper style, where you tie a knot in your rubber legs. So take two rubber legs, get long sections of them, and you're simply just going to tie an overhand knot in these legs. Don't tie it in the middle, tie it close to, closer to one end or the other. So I've got my knot in there, it's closer to, to closer to this end, my right hand, you're probably your left. And I'm going to just pull that tight 
a couple times. Don't pull it too tight, you'll break those legs. Just pull it tight. And do that for two sets of legs. So I've got this one here, and now I've got my other set. And we're gonna grab these and tie them in. I like to tie mine in both at the same time. You can do it one at a time if that's easier for you. And the way I do it is I put them in, I line my knots up with the the back of the fly, so the, the back end of that the back end of that foam, and then I just pinch the legs right on the side, take two soft loops of thread, and then I can come in and reposition those legs, get them right where I want them, so they're exactly in the spot I want them to be. This guy's having a little bit of trouble. Just pull it and then hold it while I tighten those two loops down. Just make sure I've got these legs on the way I want them here. There we go. So those legs are how I want, so I'm going to tie it down with, you know, three or four more wraps of thread. And I'm just going to leave these long for now. The next thing you want to do is tie in our wing. You can use several different materials for wing. You can use calf hair, you can use white yarn, you can use paraposts, uh, basically anything white. I'm using paraposts here because it's what I have. It's not the best or worst thing to use. I mean, it just depends on your preference. So cut off a piece and, you know, get it. So it's somewhat fat on the end. You want kind of a, a bushy wing on there and tie that guy on. Three or four good solid wraps and then clip off your extra, or you can even fold your extra back like this. Maybe that's what I'll do, just fold the extra back over the top, wrap it down again. I guess more of a full body when I just gotta cut that loop out of there so that it's even. Now we're going to put on the what I call a tag. It's just a yellow piece of foam that goes over the front part of the body. Um, so you're going to want to cut it about as long as the remaining pieces of foam. So I got my tag here. It's about this long, and just overlap it a little bit with that wing, and give it. You know, three to five solid wraps to hold it on. Make sure your legs are doing okay, and then it's time to move forward. So now we're going to fold all this back. We're going to fold back our rubber legs and our foam, and wrap our thread forward, making sure we cover up all this foam underneath if we didn't do it before, until we're almost to the eye. I'm going to leave a little space behind the eye, but I'm going to go to about there. And I'm going to fold all three pieces of foam over and cinch them down with seven or eight solid thread wraps. Now it's time to tie on my front rubber legs. I do these single, I don't double these ones up. Um, so we got my rubber legs here. Same technique, fold back your, your rear legs and then I tie both my legs on at the same time and just pinch them there. Two loose thread wraps to hold them in place. Then I grab the legs, position them how I want them. Then I tighten those wraps and put a couple more on. If those rear legs get in your way, you can always clip those off. We're going to trim it uh, at the end here. So I've got my rubber legs secured, just pull them into place there. I've got my long rubber legs on there, and I've got my foam to the front. So our fly is just about done. Now we're going to wrap the thread under the eye, a couple wraps to secure things. Grab our whip finish tool, and whip finish as we fold everything back here. There we go. Got that whip finished, and now I'll we'll just trim that and trim off these tag threads I have coming off from when I, I broke it the first time. And now we're going to want to trim our fly. 
So you can see my rear legs here are really long. Um, I like to make those about even with the knot, so I fold it back to about where the knot is and trim it there. I'll do the same thing on the other side, back to the knot, trim it. And then these front ones, you know, I, I tend to I'll grab these, pull them tight, give them a trim, and do the same thing over here. So they're about, we want it to be about the same length as these other ones, as the rear legs. So, if I can get these guys together here, pull them tight. Oops. And we'll just these, we'll trim these guys about the same length as him. They're a little longer than that side, so trim them back. Just make them so they're the same length. And then the rear legs. So with the rear legs, it's a little trickier, but you want to come in and see which one, you know, is pointing the direction you like. And then I'll come up with my scissors and I'll split the rubber leg down the middle, like this, and then I'll trim one of them. And you don't want to trim it right at the knot. Trim it a little ways down, just so the knot doesn't pull through. So I'll trim it there. You can see I left a little bit hanging off. And then we'll do the same thing over on this side. Turn my vise so you can see it a little better. Split the leg. Pull it apart. And then trim it just a little bit above the other one. And then I'll trim these two longer parts so they're the same length. Pull it tight. Trim it. I've got this big bushy wing. I like to trim my wings about even with the, with the butt of the fly. So I'll trim mine about right there. You can't see that. You can make this wing longer or bushier or more sparse, um, depending on your preferences. The last thing I do is to just trim your foam at the head. Um, so I'll trim it about like this. See how long it is there? And then I'll come underneath and I'll just kind of round, round that bottom piece out so it doesn't have any sharp edges on it. And a little bit to these pieces above it as well. Straighten the foam out a little bit. And there it is, the finished Fat Albert. Check out more of our tutorials at finspots.com. We also have some fishing reports and other tips and tricks on our website. Have a good day, folks.